A shock to the world. How did Huawei's Mate 60 Pro current ship? Break through the blockade? Who would have thought? After three years of full-scale technological blockade by the US, not only did Huawei not fall, but it pulled out a Chinese chip that stunned the world. In August 2023, the Mate 60 Pro suddenly went on sale, and its Kirin 9000S chip left Western experts speechless. How was this possible when they couldn't even get an EUV lithography machine? You have to understand, making a chip is like carving the Great Wall on a grain of rice. A 7 nanometers process means fitting billions of transistors onto a fingernail-sized piece of silicon. SMIC did it using its N plus 2 process, which is like building a precision watch with a regular machine tool, relying on process innovation to push mature equipment to its limits. What's even more revolutionary is that 90% of the phone's 46 suppliers and over 10,000 parts are from China, a number that was only 30% three years ago. Meanwhile, ASML's sales of lithography machines to China have surged by 129%. What's going on? Let's uncover the inside story of this technological breakthrough, see how Huawei turned a blockade into a springboard, and what this means for the global tech landscape. When teardown experts placed the Mate 60 Pro's chip under a microscope, they found that the Kirin 9000S was made using SMIX N plus 2 process, which is equivalent to 7 nanometers. This wasn't simple imitation, it was a hard-fought path of asymmetric breakthrough. While others use one EUV machine to get it done, Huawei used multiple DUV machines with overlay exposure, relying on algorithm optimization to improve precision. Although there is still a generational gap compared to TSMC's 5 nanometers process, achieving this under a complete supply cutoff is like growing rice in a desert. Even more significant is the supply chain's comeback. Three years ago, the domestic component ratio for the Mate 30 series was just 30%. At that time, core components like high-end chips and RF parts were highly dependent on imports, making the supply chain fragile. When the Mate 60 Pro was released, this number soared to over 90%. This isn't just a simple percentage increase. It's a testament to the qualitative leap of China's semiconductor industry from a follower to a co-runner. A professional teardown report from Japanese media showed that the share of Japanese and American components which used to be substantial, has plummeted. In this silent technological war, Huawei, with its incredible resilience, built a complete backup to primary system. This includes autonomous architecture design for the current chip, the breakthrough mass production of SMIX 14 nanometers process, color calibration for BOE's flexible OLED screens, and performance optimization for YMTC's flash memory. This supply chain matrix, which doesn't rely on Western technology, operates like a meticulously managed digital great wall. When an external supply cutoff order is issued, the internal alternatives seamlessly take over. Huawei not only built a technological moat for itself but also spurred the collective awakening of the entire domestic semiconductor industry, turning, chokehold, technologies into killer weapons. Huawei's move completely shattered the prejudice that advanced chips couldn't be made without Western technology. The blockade became a catalyst, forcing Chinese companies to achieve breakthroughs from design to manufacturing. But this was the result of countless engineers working day and night, and the collaborative effort of the entire industry. However, we must be clear-headed. While a breakthrough was achieved, there is still a gap with the top to level, and this, unconventional, process also faces high costs. The global chip industry is an interconnected chain, and forcefully severing it will ultimately hurt everyone. The US, wielding the big stick of chip bans, intended to strangle Huawei's development through technological blockade and market isolation. Instead, it created a dramatic reversal, the classic case of lifting a rock only to drop it on one's own foot. According to a report by the Semiconductor Industry Association, SIA, strict export restrictions on China are backfiring on American companies, causing tens of billions of dollars in lost revenue annually and undermining their dominant position in the global supply chain. In ASML's 2024 financial report, the Chinese market's performance was astonishing. Sales to China surged to 7 billion euros, accounting for 42% of its total revenue, 
a year-on-year increase of 129%. Behind this data is a profound reshaping of the global chip landscape. China has built the world's most comprehensive chip manufacturing system, with mature processed chip capacity accounting for 33% of the global total. From control chips and smart cars to IoT sensors, and from core industrial automation components to consumer electronics, Chinese chips are deeply embedded in the global supply chain with their cost-effective advantages, rendering the so-called technological blockade an empty gesture. American companies, on one hand, are pressured by policy to enforce restrictions, while on the other, they must scramble to compete for the Chinese market through various compliant channels. This contradictory market behavior is a true reflection of the global chip industry's supply-demand relationship. Let's look at the EU. The CHIPS Act, passed in 2023, was ambitious, planning to invest 43 billion euros to increase the EU's share of global chip production from 10% to 20% by 2030, hoping to reshape Europe's core position in the global semiconductor industry. However, reality poured cold water on this grand plan. On the talent side, the lack of a high-end semiconductor talent cultivation system makes it difficult for the EU to quickly assemble R&D and production teams for advanced processes. Soaring energy costs, especially after the Russia-Ukraine conflict, caused gas prices to fluctuate violently, making operational costs for energy-intensive chip manufacturing uncontrollable. As for market access, by overly following the US policy of blocking chips to China, European companies directly lost the world's largest chip consumer market, causing the expected growth curve to plummet. European companies have voiced their complaints. Giants like Siemens and Infineon have publicly stated that blindly following America's blockade strategy is tantamount to shooting themselves in the foot. It not only caused companies to miss out on the most promising growth market but also continuously weakened Europe's say in the global semiconductor supply chain. The lithography giant ASML has repeatedly warned that a complete cutoff of supply to China would not only cause European semiconductor equipment manufacturers to lose billions of euros in annual revenue but would also accelerate the stagnation of technological iteration. Without the verification and feedback from a massive market, Europe would gradually lose its leading edge in cutting-edge technologies like EUV lithography, ultimately trapping the entire European semiconductor industry in a vicious cycle. This series of events has exposed the flaws of technological hegemony. The U.S. thought it could use bans to curb China's development, but forgot that the global supply chain is an interconnected ecosystem. As China gains a firm foothold in the mature process field, Western companies have to come to China to do business. The EU followed suit, only to find its CHIPS Act was an empty shell. This shows that technological competition is not a zero-sum game. Engaging in blockades will ultimately backfire. Only open cooperation can lead to a win-win situation, a lesson some countries have yet to learn. Huawei's breakthrough is reshaping the global tech ecosystem. Comparing the supply chains of the Mate 60 Pro and the iPhone 15, Huawei's domestic component ratio is 90%, while Apple's is 33%. This highlights the struggle for technological autonomy. What's even more interesting is that even Germany's Zeiss couldn't help but say that the US sanctions were a mistake, allowing China to become the market winner. This is because China's focus on 28 nanometers and above mature processes coincides with the explosive demand for automotive electronics and IoT, a market worth trillions of dollars. Huawei's case tells us that the global tech supply chain is being reconfigured. It used to be a center periphery, model dominated by the West. Now, China is breaking this pattern. The breakthrough in mature processes is highly significant because most industrial needs don't require the most advanced chips. When China gains an advantage in this field, it becomes difficult for the West to exert control. This is not about seeking technological decoupling, but about striving for the right to equal dialogue and making global tech cooperation more equitable. Huawei's comeback forged a new path of asymmetric breakthrough. If others block high-end lithography machines, they will focus on innovating with mature processes. If others ban EDA software, they will develop their own alternative tools. This strategy makes US sanctions increasingly ineffective, like punching cotton, using force in the wrong way. European companies see this most clearly. 
ASML outwardly complies with the ban while its sales to China soar because no one wants to lose the largest market in the world. This is different from the U.S. suppression of Japan's semiconductor industry in the 1980s. Today, the global supply chain is more intertwined, and the scale of the Chinese market is much larger. The U.S. was able to force Japan to sign the Plaza Accord back then, but now it finds it can't choke off China, and its own companies are losing opportunities. In the same month the Huawei Mate 60 Pro was released, the U.S. Semiconductor Industry Association lobbied the government to relax restrictions because if the bans continue, American companies could lose their competitiveness entirely.